Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Jennifer Moran. I'm the artist behind a lot of the designs that are sold uh, on this channel, Jennifer Esquire Creations. And I am embarking on a brand new journey, which scares the bejeebers out of me, which is animation. I am very comfortable using Photoshop and all these other softwares, Premiere, um, Manga Studio. But for years, animation has been very intimidating and scary. I tried to use to learn it using Anime Studio and failed miserably because it was too hard. Really, really, really hard. So I'm starting again and I'm trying to learn how to use this software, which is the Adobe Animate CC. So I've been playing around with it, trying to learn things. And each week I'm going to be releasing a video to you guys of what I've learned and kind of giving you some help and some tips. I'm by no means an expert. If you're looking for an expert tutorial, definitely, definitely go find somebody else. I will link somebody in the bottom that I have been watching to help you. But if you're just like trying to learn this with me and you just want somebody to sympathize with, like girl, I know this is really hard. I'm having a hard time too. Then watch this video. If you want to just empathize with the struggle or if you're going through something yourself that you're trying to learn and maybe you're having a hard time maybe this might help you so we're just gonna learn as we go and we're just gonna do the best we can so the first thing that I learned how to do was to set up a workspace and also save a workspace so I'm gonna show you guys how I customize the workspace that I like and what's best for me it could be different for you but at least I'll teach you how to do it so the guy that I watched said you want to go for this type of file this is the uh, audio something or other I can't action script 3.0 this is the one he said that the other ones uh, are more complicated but this is like the best beginners one so we're gonna go to that and we're gonna set ourselves up a workspace so this is the workspace that you get when you first open the program which to me isn't conducive I don't like it you know whatever you're gonna do this white spot right here sorry for my squeaky desk I apologize in advance for the squeaky desk or any snoring dogs or anything you may hear in the background my life is just noisy I am sorry so the first thing that I want to do is get this desk, or this desktop or this workspace to work with me. So over here on the very far right are the tools. These are the tools of our lives and these are important. So I'm going to just take these and pop them over here because that's where I like them to be. I like them to be on this side. There are so many different tools and ways to draw. I'll go into that in a little bit, but I like them to be skinny like that. That's my preference. The next thing I want to do is I want to take the tools properties. These are all the different controls per tool. And I want to pop these over here as well. So we have our tools and then we have our tool properties. I like it like that. That's just the way I like it. It's just the way I like it. Next, I'm going to grab this little thing that looks like a palette that says color. I'm going to open this up. This is really nice. I enjoy this. And then I'm going to pull right here where it says swatches. I'm going to pull that out so that these two are separate because I don't like going back and forth. It's just not fun for me. So I'm going to put this one over here like so. And it's just going to sit there. And then I'm going to put this one underneath like so. And then I'm going to try to get rid of this. This is the library's one. Maybe that's going to be important at some later date. Who knows? But for now, I don't need it. Don't care. So I'm going to make that come out like that. Make this. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. Okay. We don't like that. I want this to be underneath this or that to be underneath that. One of those two have to be like that. Okay. So this is our swatcheroos. This is our thing to, to create custom colors because, you know, sometimes swatches just don't do it for you. Then what you want to do is this is the timeline. This is the layers panel over here on the far left. So all the layers that you're going to be using to draw with are going to be here. And then this is the timeline where you're going to actually be timing out your animations. I have uh, eye problems, so for me, this does not work. It's too far away from where my eyes naturally want to look. So I'm bringing this up here, and I'm going to snap it into place where you see that blue line. So now I have a really good access to my timeline, my swatches, my colors, my tools, and my libraries. This is how I like to use my workspace. If your stage somehow gets like off kilter, this little button right here that says center stage will center your stage right up. So now you have everything where you need it to be. 
a cat is in here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So then once you have everything exactly where you want it, you're going to go to Windows. Then you're going to go to Workspace right here. And then you're going to go into... Whoops, you're going to go into, sorry, having trouble here, new workspace. So you're going to go into new workspace. Now, if you messed up your other workspace and you were having issues with it and you lost a palette, which can sometimes happen, you can go right down here to reset and it will reset it for you so that you'll be able to find things. That happened to me yesterday. I lost my tools palette and I could not find it again. So that will reset what you're currently working on and then you just have to start from scratch, but at least you'll be able to find things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect this, uh, connect, connect. I'm going to select this that says new workspace. It's going to ask me to name my workspace. Let's call this super fun times. We'll just name that one that. So you're going to select OK. And so now every time I want this, this specific workspace, it is saved. And so I know this is exactly how I like it. So next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the types of drawings that you can do. Now for me, uh, drawing in this is a lot easier than drawing in Anime Studio. Anime Studio was kind of difficult. So I want to talk to you guys about the different ways there are to draw. So the first thing you have is a line. Now this line right here is just going to make a line. If you go over in the properties, you can change the color of your line. Let's make a green line. Uh, you can also change the thickness of your line like this. You can also go down here and you can change the style of your line. So maybe you want to make one that looks like a road. Why didn't it come out? Who knows? It's supposed to. Let's try to lower it. I'm still learning and, and trying to maneuver all this stuff. I don't know why it's not coming out, but supposedly it's supposed to come out like a little road. So let's try it again. Maybe we have to, nope, I don't know. It was working before guys. So this is a way to choose different types of line work. There we go. That one's working. I don't know why the other one wasn't working. Who knows? So that is that. Then you can go in here and these are the different types of lines that you can do. And for some reason it's not wanting to open up. I don't know what's the problem. Oh, I know why. So you got to go back to the main line and then this will open up. Or well, maybe it's the second line. And then this will open up. This is the width thing. This is really interesting. Maybe it just doesn't work for, for lines. I know it works for pens. So anyway, you can use a line to make to make it. You can also use this thing, which makes a square, which is pretty cool. You have a circle, you have an octagon, and you can do other kinds, I believe. There's different types of circles and things that you can do. So these are things you can kind of play with. This one's interesting because you can... Um, get at it from different points, but I'll go into that later. Uh, so, so you have the line tool, the shape tools, you have a pencil tool. Pencil tool is great. If you are somebody who just likes to sketch and just enjoys making all sorts of crazy lines and just, you know, having that flexibility, that is it. I'm going to change this to a darker color so we can actually see it better for those of you who are like me, who are visually not the best. So we're going to do this like little line right there. Now you can go in here and hopefully this will work to create the lines. Not working. Don't know why. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Supposedly you're supposed to be able to, and I don't know why you can't, make different. Oh, there we go. It just popped up. These are all sorts of different lines. So this is like just a straight line. This is my preferred type of line. It's like a sketchbook. Let me just make this a little bit thicker so you guys can like... See what I'm doing? See how it's like that on it, both ends? This to me simulates a pen, which is the way that I like to draw. There are tons of different ones you can do. So like this one, you can do this one, which is like a straight line that kind of goes in on both ends. So based on whatever you're trying to draw, like this one right here that's skinny on one end and fat on the other, this is the eyebrow tool. That's what I call it. So you use that to draw a pretty decent eyebrow when you want to do the other eyebrow. You just Got to go backwards, and it works great. Those are some good-looking brows. And then that's pretty much what you're going to need. This is a brush tool. So this is the um, paintbrush tool, basically, which is, again, just a brush. You can use it like a pen. It has all the same 
things. You can you can do whatever you want to. Let's see if this works in here. We're trying. Nope, no, nope. I don't know why it's not working, guys. Don't know. We're just gonna have to just play with that another day. So you have the paintbrush tool. This paintbrush tool is good if you're trying to do some coloring in. So we'll do that. And then this is the just regular brush tool. Again, it's a different type. I don't know what the difference between a paintbrush and a brush is. I have to figure that out another day. And then you have the fill tool. Now the fill tool won't work like on Photoshop where I just click on an empty space and it fills itself completely in. You have to create something with a, which is a solid shape. So let me go to my let me go to my pen and let me just create a little shape for us and make sure that it is a solid shape that there are no empty lines and then it fills right in so there you go um, so that works really great then you have this which is the I don't know what that one is actually ink effect ink bottle tool I you know I don't know how to use the ink bottle tool that was one I didn't learn yet but you have all these different tools you have an eraser just different things and everything has a corresponding um, property value to it so these are all your different tools, these are your properties, these are your swatches, these are your colors, and then if you want to go up here and you want to create a new layer, so let me just get rid of this stuff. Let me, you know, if you want to, um, there's two different ways to delete. So you can do, like in Photoshop and Premiere, you can just do the Control Z, and that will just get rid of everything one by one if you just want to delete like one step. But if you want to delete everything, what I find is useful is taking this big selection tool and then selecting delete. Now we have a brand new space. So see how like when I intersected these guys, they they got all connected. So now if I try to move this around, they're all connected. So it's this is why we need to animate on different layers. So I just got all my circles in a jumble and we don't want that for animation. So if you're trying to animate somebody whether it's a person whether it's a bunch of shapes what you want to do is you want to do is create a shape on each layer so that they won't intersect each other so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a circle I'm going to create this shape so it's ready for animation and then I'm going to create my little circle then I'm going to go up here and create a new layer and then on this new layer I'm going to create a square or a rectangle. Then I'm going to go over here and create a new layer. And I'm going to create a beautiful little little hexi, hexagon. So these are the three different shapes that I have going for me. So we got, ooh, did not mean to do that. Control Z out of my face. Okay, so now we got beautiful hexagon, beautiful rectangle, beautiful circle. And these are all considered one piece of art. All right, so now we have all of these three different shapes on different timelines. And let's say we want them all to go in different directions. So now we're going to get into a little bit of animating. This is what I've learned so far. You want to you want to try to get this thing to be a certain amount of time. So let's mark out 100 frames. So you just want to take your mouse and just click and drag over all of these all of these doohickeys and let's just take this out to 100 right here let's just go to 100 because or just around 100 so now these are all connected we're saying that this is how long we want this to go we're going to collect connect or, or select f5 f5 kind of gives us an ending marker to go by so let's do this we're going to go to this one right here this is the um Let's see which one this is. I think this might be the hexagon. If you want to know which layer you're working on, all you need to do is click on this dot right here, and that will kind of make it disappear. So then you'll know, like, okay, that's the one. So this is very, 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 very basic, like so, so basic animation. So what you want to do is we're going to click on layer 5, and then we're going to select the F6. This is going to mark that as a frame. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move it ever so, oops, moved it in the wrong direction. Let's control Z that out of here. Then we're going to take our little tool and we're going to move it ever so slightly in this direction. Then we're going to go a little bit further out. 
go like this and hit another F6. And this is kind of making like a little animation marker. And we're wanting to make sure that we stay consistently on our timeline. So this is going to help us go forward. And just go ever so slightly. The, um, the further apart these things are, the more jerky your animation is going to look. The closer together they are, the nicer your animation is going to look. There's stuff under here where you could have, um, where is it? I can't read what that says. Oh, a clone skin. So this is good if you want to check this just so you know how far you go. So you kind of, it doesn't have anything to do with the animation. It just gives you a little, a little understanding of like where you came from. So you can kind of make sure that you stay on path and you don't get all jacked up. And these things can, can happen easily when you're doing animation because um, it's hard to sometimes keep a straight line. So we're just going to move it a little bit, go to the next frame, F6, move it a little bit, go to the next frame. F6. This can be a little bit of a tedious process, but in the end, it works out. So now we have, we're going to go to the next layer. We have Mr. Rectangle. Mr. Rectangle is over here. So we're going to make him go up. So we're going to make him go up a little bit. And then we're going to click F6. Up a little bit and click F6. And up a little bit and we're going to click F6. Now once he crosses this line, you need to know that this part of him won't be seen. So this is like the border. So just so you guys know that. Up a little bit. F6. This is basically a very rudimentary version of frame by frame animation. And what you will notice is that because each of these are on a different layer, they'll be able to intersect with each other and move independently and they're not really connected to each other so this makes it a lot easier for you so we're just going a little bit more and it's not perfect I'm not like trying to make it perfect but we're just working with it the best we can so we're gonna go back to our circle now this is Mr. Circle or Mrs. Circle excuse me ma'am so we're going to click on here, F6. And we're going to click on here. And I'm just going to keep doing F6. Oops. I did a lot of F6s. Let's just click. So this might be interesting. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to make this circle go a little crazy. Just because we can. See what happens to it. If you don't want all these F6s, all you need to do is just control V to undo. I'm just making this go kind of crazy. So Let's see what happens. I'm just going to play this out. So, all right. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to hit the play button. So it just has to cycle through and then it'll start the animation process. Squeaky disk. Okay. So there you guys see my wonderful animation of this. So I think the square looks the best to be honest. I feel like that's the most smooth. But you can you can you know mess with it as you like. And then that is how you can do your first kind of practice frame by frame animation. So you can make as many layers as you want to. You can make things as elaborate as you want to. Um, you can use different things to draw. So in the next one, I'm going to be focusing more on the drawing tools, drawing a picture, maybe trying to animate that picture a little bit, being a little bit more uh, adventurous. But this is the first video, you guys, of everything that I pretty much learned so far with this. And yeah, so I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you soon.